you everyone for joining our podcast today. The topic for today's discussion is five things to embrace the future of procure to pay. And our expert panelist today is Chris Doxy, president at Doxy Inc. Chris spent most of her career implementing leading financial processes and internal controls at global companies such as Digital Equipment Corporation, Compact Computer Corporation, Philip Packard, and MCI, where she was a controller, director of financial process transformation, internal auditor, and director of global accounts payable. Welcome, Chris, and thanks a lot for doing this. Let's kickstart this podcast with our first question. How has today's procure to pay professional evolved from a transactional position to an analyst? Again, great questions. I I love doing these these podcasts with Zykus. And if we talk about the evolution of a procure to pay professional, we look at the start with the corporate transaction processor in in the back office. So that's how AP and uh, a procurement professional was was looked at. And in some cases where companies have not fully automated, that's still the case. And we faced manual processes driven by very disconnected systems. And what happened sort of around, I would say, the uh, late 90s to early 2000s, the AP professional and even the P2P professional went from being perceived as a clerk to a cost impactor. And that was because there was a focus on cost savings, AP and source to pay and procure to pay automation, and of course, P card rebates. The really hot process that came into place, uh, you know, back in that um, late 90s, early 2000s timeframe was everyone was using P cards to, to pay vendors because they saw the benefit of getting a rebate back. And if we look at where we are today with the, the um, evolution, we see automated processes, data is, is a lot more accurate, and we have shorter financial closing times, and that's really allowing a new focus on analytics. And again, having all the tools in place and some of the things we talked about at a, on a prior podcast really are helping us move that, that uh, AP and P2P professional into that professional role and more of an analyst because what companies have found is once we get the data accurate and get things right and get things automated and streamlined, there's a tremendous amount of value in the data that accounts payable is processing and that, of course, the procure-to-pay process is, is influencing. So very good question. Thanks, Chris. Let's move to our next question. Can you please tell us how have procure-to-pay transformation concepts changed the evaluation of a procure-to-pay profession? Yeah, what's really what's really happened is that with combining processes, we're taking out the silos in a department. We're taking out the silos and we're allowing accounts payable and procurement to actually uh, talk uh, a lot, a lot uh, more in a friendly manner and processes are, are connected. And if we don't think about AP as a separate process and, and procurement as a separate process and, again, take out those silos, we have a nice clean procure to pay process and that's allowing us to really get into what we have today is an end to end procure to pay process that we can influence and look at automation and uh, analytics for. So great question. Thanks, Chris. What are the five things that we can start doing today? Tell us about each one. Yes, um, it, it really starts with analyzing, and that's assessing and benchmarking the current process and, and P2P and determining how you're performing or how your company is performing against what is perceived to be the best in class. And you start with a, a little bit of benchmarking, and this can be done very formally or very informally, and there are several great benchmarks out there um, available that um, the P2P professional or AP professional can look at. And we, we identify what we want to benchmark. If we have companies, we can benchmark against 
collect the data, determine performance gaps, and project future performance levels, communicate your findings of a benchmark initiative, establish functional goals, develop action plans, and implement those plans and monitor your progress. And of course, recalibrate your benchmarks if they just don't make sense. And that's completely fine because many companies um, start with a benchmark initiative, they have very lofty goals for metrics and results and they find that they're not achievable. The next concept is strategize. And this, of course, can be done today. Determine where you want to be. And, you know, again, that can be done by really being sure you know where your pain points are in the process and defining your optimal future process. And it's really kind of a seven-step process uh, to develop this strategy. You prepare for the strategy. You have a mission and a vision. You assess your situation and what it's going to take to get to that mission and vision. And that's done with developing specific strategies, goals, and objectives across the, the P2P process area. You write your plan, and that usually is coupled with a, a very def well-defined project plan. You implement your strategy, and then you always go back and evaluate. With all these, these five things that we're talking about, important to go back and reevaluate and, and see how things are going. And of course, prioritizing, coupled with the last one we talked about, which is strategy, you identify the most critical actions which produce the highest ROI. You know, and we, we say the biggest bang for, for your dollar. And we look at maybe working capital impacts, you know, such as P card rebates, improving cost per invoice, possibly reducing headcount or full time equivalents, looking at process efficiencies and of course automation and really get a handle on how automation can help us Im improve ROI and actually reduce risk and, and improve controls along the way. Here's a, a chart that actually talks about how we can prioritize and it kind of goes over some of the things we talked about. But looking at the solution design and, and having that endpoint in mind that you've defined with your mission and, and strategy it starts with really understanding the problem, identifying your goals, mapping your current process, because guess what? That's your baseline, and it's certainly going to change with solution design and improvements. Design your solution, calculate your ROI, and, and as mentioned, make sure you have a, a baseline of metrics to measure your success against. Document and present, of course, to your stakeholders, and then go live, and I think using these steps for prioritization are certainly going to help. And with digitizing, we're talking really about automating. And that's taking a look at the technologies to enable a process transformation. And we have a little universe that we talked about, and these are things that we can certainly digitize and automate, paper, invoice receipt, document, data capture, electronic invoicing, content management, matching and workflow, and of course that's resulting in the wonderful result of good reporting and, and accurate analytics. Other considerations are e-procurement, PO flip, and informational and collaborative supplier portals, and that's not just having a portal where a supplier can check status of invoices, but actually collect data to onboard and, and vet that supplier into your supplier master. And of course, supplier onboarding, supplier risk analysis, uh, contact management, and the GL interface. And of course, what I really like with some of these automated solutions we have been talking about, they lead to a continuous control monitoring process, which helps us, again, take a look at risk and certainly reduce costs. Last but not least, the fifth component or fifth step is organizing. And, you know, this gets a little, a little tricky because we want to make sure we have the right skills to drive the change. And, you know, again, you can probably see that this is all about change management and understanding that this is the direction for the future of P2P transformation. And we can take a look at looking at AP and um, how the due diligence 
can be improved related to supplier setup and timely invoice processing. And today's professional must be familiar not only with just their process, but the entire process and should be able to perform analytics and identify ongoing opportunities for process improvements and, and uh, remediation where needed. So Chris, what are the key skills that a P2P professional needs to have? I look at a P2P professional as, you know, again, thinking about our evolution of the, the you know, the skills that were needed, you know, maybe uh, 20 years ago to what, um, what's in place today. And the P2P professional should be very familiar with analytics, and um, that means, you know, having some, some knowledge of, of being able to use Excel and, and other analytical tools um, that are available and being able to look at data, and that's not just using Excel, but looking at data and seeing what's, what's happening, being able to have the analytical mind to determine, okay, if cost is going up or if cost is going down or if invoice uh, payment amounts are changing, how do, I, how, do I deep, how do I dig deeper? And with good analytic, analytical skills, the, the P2P professional knows that they need to drill down and uh, look into the process to identify opportunities and possibly highlight a control issue as well. And uh, a P2P professional is very forward thinking and they don't think in terms of the silo, uh, you know, a silo process. They think about how things fit together and how they can improve the P2P process with good analytic skills and also ensuring that they have good communication skills and they're able to report their findings. And I think that's really the change is, is not just a processor, but an analyst, as we talked about in one of the earlier slides. So Chris, why is the ability to analyze such an important skill? Yeah, the, the ability to analyze is an important skill because, again, with the accurate data that we have as a result of the automation efforts and new databases, we can spot trends. You know, we can, we can do a lot of things. We can look at strategic sourcing, um, and that's depending on, you know, how much spend is per supplier. We can identify our strategic suppliers. That would be the second one. The third one is that we can identify metrics and changes in trend analysis that could indicate that maybe a duplicate payment has been made. And then, of course, the fourth one would be being able to put your analytics into action. So doing analytics in a vacuum is not a good thing, but taking your results and looking again across the P2P process and determining okay, where are the weaknesses and opportunities in my, my process? And of course, this helps with, you know, internal controls initiatives, Sarbanes-Oxley initiatives, and, and last but not least, really good opportunities to improve the P2P process and, and work with your stakeholders. So analytics coupled with communication and reporting skills is, is certainly a win-win for a company. So Chris, what are the dependencies for a good set of analytics? The dependencies are ensuring that the data is correct. If we're doing reports and analysis on bad data, it, it's meaningless. And that's making sure that the controls are in place up front to make sure that databases are correct. And to give you an example, if we're looking at payment data, uh, by supplier, we want to make sure that that's good information because, as mentioned, we could be using that for, um, you know, certainly strategic supplier initiatives to identify top suppliers, and that could be going to a chief procurement officer, maybe even a, a CFO or CEO. So analytics and, and being really savvy with using, you know, some of the tools that we talked about, it, 
is, is very key. And then the other key point about analytics is you could be seeing a story um, unfolding. And, and an example of that is if we look at supplier payments with certain aspects within the supplier master, we can actually perform risk analysis. And by performing very specific risk analysis within the P2P process, whether it's payment or supplier risk, we can identify opportunities not only to improve the office, but uh, the, uh, the company and the process, but we can actually come up with ideas for preventing a potential fraud, which is, you know, again, one of the, um, one of the outputs of good data analytics. Thanks a lot, Chris. That was a very informative podcast. I hope our listeners enjoyed it. Thanks again for doing this. Okay. Thank you so much.